The Chevrolet 327 is a famous and iconic V8 engine produced by Chevrolet from 1962 to 1969. It is part of Chevrolet's small block V8 family and has a rich history in American automotive culture. Here is a brief overview of the history of the Chevrolet 327. Introduction The Chevrolet 327 was introduced in 1962 as an option for various Chevrolet models, including the Corvette and the Chevrolet Impala. It was part of the second generation of Chevrolet's small block V8 engines. Technical Specifications the original 327-inch 3, 5.4 liters, V8 engine was available in several configurations, with power outputs ranging from approximately 210 horsepower to over 375 horsepower in high-performance variants. It featured a small bore and a relatively long stroke, which made it capable of producing impressive torque. High-performance variants The Chevrolet 327 gained fame for its high-performance variants, including the L76, L84, and L79. The L76, for example, was a 327 V8 with a high compression ratio, a performance camshaft, and dual four-barrel carburetors, producing 340 horsepower. The L84 was the fuel-injected version, which was rated at 360 horsepower and was primarily used in the Corvette. The L79 was a popular option for many Chevrolet models, featuring a milder camshaft and a single four-barrel carburetor but still producing a respectable 350 horsepower. Racing success The Chevrolet 327 engine found success in motorsport, particularly in the Corvette, where it powered some of the most iconic racing versions, including the Corvette Grand Sport. Evolution and Legacy the 327 engine underwent several evolutionary changes during its production run, including changes to the cylinder heads, camshaft, and carburetion. In 1966, Chevrolet introduced the L72 variant of the 327, which produced a stunning 425 horsepower and was available in the Corvette and the Chevelle. The 327 was eventually phased out in favor of larger displacement engines, such as the 350-inch 3V8 which became one of Chevrolet's most enduring and widely used engines. Influence The Chevrolet 327 has left a lasting legacy in the world of American muscle cars and hot rodding. It remains a popular choice for enthusiasts looking to restore or modify classic Chevrolet vehicles. Many aftermarket performance parts and upgrades are available for the 327, making it a versatile engine for customization. Overall, the Chevrolet 327 is remembered as a powerful and versatile engine that played a significant role in the golden era of American muscle cars and high-performance vehicles. Its influence can still be seen in the automotive enthusiast community today. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to Benny and All Parts Facebook page, and welcome to all of our YouTube subscribers as well. So in our last little video, which was last week, we uh, highlighted part five of the 327 engine build. And we told you at that time that we were going to get it on the engine running stand and get everything hooked up and get it, get it fired up. So uh, we have done that. Uh, we worked on it a uh, little bit Labor Day. Uh, got a lot of it done. Got it on the engine stand uh, actually that Monday. And just kind of been working on it a couple hours in the morning during the week here, uh, getting everything ready to go, getting all set. So uh, we have gotten it on the stand. Uh, we've got everything uh, hooked up and ready to, ready to crank it up, ready to run it and let you hear it run. And, uh, just a couple couple things that we've done along the way. Of course, we've uh, we've got the customer's carburetor mounted on it. Uh, this is actually the carburetor that the customer is going to be running. Uh, if you'll remember back several videos ago, we had this same carburetor on the Pontiac Trans Am 400 engine that was on the stand prior to this. So, uh, a little bit about that engine. It has been delivered. Uh, customer has picked it up. Uh, and it's headed up to uh, Harris County, Georgia. He picked it up yesterday afternoon. We put it on a nice little engine stand for him. Uh, we shrink wrapped it all real good, sealed it up, and uh, he's uh, picked that engine up and gone. So with that one getting off the stand, we've got this one on. So uh, this is a carburetor cover. We always keep a cover on our, on, on our carburetor so that you don't want 
any kind of foreign material happen to get down through the carburetor because that's not that's not a good thing uh, and trust me I've seen it happen uh, accidents happen you be working on something else and all of a sudden a, a bolt slips or gets loose and first thing you know it's down the carburetor so always try to keep the carburetor uh, covered up so a couple things on this motor we've done uh, of course we've got it mounted got a water pump pulley on it we have added for the cusper on this particular one we've got an uh, I put an Edelbrock inline fuel filter for him uh, so this engine didn't have a filter on it so we've got an inline fuel filter uh, that will filter any fuel coming from the tank got a new fuel pump on it uh, of course the carburetor's got the fuel pressure gauge, got the distributor in it, got its plug wires, uh, got a starter on it, uh, got the ram horn exhaust manifolds, uh, which is a real uh, real popular manifold. Uh, they're called ram horn center dumps, as you can see they dump out through the center. We've got those installed. Uh, we've, got, uh, we've got water in it, we've got oil in it, we've got our uh, Gauge is all hooked up and ready to uh, show everything. Once we get it cranked up, we'll be showing all pressure and the temperature and so forth. So uh, we'll uh, we'll get that in just a second. We've got over here. This is the customer's clutch. So we use McLeod's clutches. Uh, we like McLeod. McLeod is a, a good quality clutch uh, at a reasonable price. This is a ten and a half inch clutch. Clutch. Uh, ceramic got a ceramic disc on it for performance a performance clutch of course ten and a half inch this particular one uses a 26 spline so he's got a five speed i guess a tree mac five speed in this car but anyway it's a 26 spline so typically these cars came with uh, muncie's which were 10 spline or you could get a borg warner t10 the borg warner t10 was a 26 spline this particular one is a 26 spline so as you can see it the clutch uh the disc is a, is a 26 spline as you can see it goes right in there that's the kind of the lineup shaft that we'll use once we install this onto the onto the back of the flywheel. Uh, we'll make sure it's lined up with this. Uh, so when a customer gets ready to put his transmission in, it'll go right in. So uh, that is next. We'll put that on after we get it off of the engine stand. Uh, be one of the very last things that we do. Uh, got the customer's uh, dipstick tube installed. Uh, everything is uh, hooked up and about ready to go. Uh, so uh, we're going to uh, open up some doors, uh, get a little air in here, and get this thing cranked up uh, so you can hear it run. We'll probably run it for a couple, two or three minutes, run it through a heat cycle and uh, so you can hear it idle uh, and uh, just uh, see how it performs. It's got a real nice camshaft in it. This particular one, we, we put a, uh, a 510 lift. Uh, camshaft in it, uh, 510 on the valve lift. It's got, a, it's got a good duration. It's got a 310 degree duration, advertised duration. Uh, so that is very equal to the old Chevrolet, what they used to call the 151 camshaft. It's a, it's a hydraulic flat tappet with a lot of duration. Of course, this, this engine can, or this car can take a lot of duration camshaft because you don't have to worry about stall converter, it being a stick shift car. So uh, we're going to idle it down. It'll probably idle somewhere around 900 RPM. That's what we're shooting for. Uh, we've got the timing we've got to set. We'll set the timing about 36 degrees total advance. So basically the way I do that is I bring the RPM up to about 2,000 RPM. On my timing light, I'll stick 36 degrees in my timing light, and I line the marks up on 00, zero and that gives me 36 total. Uh, you can take these engines up to, you know, some people can run them up to 40 degrees total advance. Uh, that's kind of putting it on the right on the high side limit. We kind of tend to stay a little bit conservative until they get broke in good. So we're going to set this about 36 degrees total advance without the vacuum advance hooked up. We won't hook that up till we're done. Uh, so at, at a 36 degree total, at, at a base idle advance, that's gonna give you between, uh, between 10 and 12 degrees base idle advance, distributed advance at idle. So uh, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, oil's in it, everything's ready to go. So uh, I'm gonna open, this, open these doors and then uh, 
let's see if we can uh, get this thing fired up for everybody. So this is part six of the, this is part six, the last part of the of the six videos that we've done on this engine. So uh, this will be the final video. This particular customer is, uh, if everything goes fine, which I don't anticipate that it wouldn't, uh, he'll be here tomorrow uh, to pick it up. He's coming over from Birmingham, Alabama uh, to Columbus to, to pick this up. Uh, fellow that sent me this engine is somebody that I worked with at the Buick and Cadillac dealership way back years ago, probably 30 years ago. Uh, we've remained friends over over all this time, over the last 30 years, and he knows that I bought Benning Auto Parts, and of course he said I wouldn't take it to anybody else but Benning Auto Parts, so we're very proud of that. Uh, thank him for that uh, in showing us the uh, the privilege of building it and uh, the expert uh, expertise that we put in it and, and the confidence that he's instilled in us to, to do the right job. Again, this is going in a Corvette, uh, so 65, 66 Corvette, uh, 327 uh, coupe, coupe car, so uh, it's all good. Uh, I think it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to turn out really, really good for the customer. So. You can hear our compressor just kicked on in the background, but it won't matter because you're not going to hear much in a minute when I fire this engine up. So anyway, without much more ado, let's let's, uh, let's take no carburetor cap off. Uh, let's set the choke. Got the choke on it. Got electric choke on this thing, and uh, everything should be good to go. I got my fuel on. Fuel's on. Battery's hooked up. So let's uh, let's see if we can get something going. Just a little bit, let me get my screwdriver.
So everything looks good, sounds good. Uh, temperature got up to about 160 degrees. So uh, it's uh, looks like it's going to be good. Uh, I might put a little bit more time in it. It sounds like it could use a little bit more time in it. But uh, other than that, uh, looks like we're good to go. Uh, hope y'all enjoyed it. Appreciate you watching our little video of this build. Like I said, it was about a six part build. And this is the final step and uh, everything looks good. So we'll be getting it, uh, getting it off the engine stand, getting the clutch hooked up for our customer and uh, getting everything ready to go for him to pick it up tomorrow. So once again, I hope you appreciate it. Uh, appreciate the video. Appreciate you guys joining in and watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, one last thing before we go. So as soon as that one gets off the stand, we've been talking about this 327. So, uh, excuse me, 427. So this is the next one that's going on. This is a 427. Uh, big block car, 3-2 car. Uh, going in a 67 model 435 horse uh, Corvette. So uh, that's the next thing online. So uh, be watching for it. We'll do a little video of that as we go through. So uh, once again, thanks for tuning in and I hope you enjoy it.